another tutorial from Acrylic Code. Today I'll show you how to create this animation with Touch Designer. We use this animation as a background to our 3 hour techno mix video and if you haven't watched it yet I will just put it in the description box below. Now let's start from scratch. I already opened an empty project. Now let's split the screen, activate the top viewer and let's right click here to turn off the backdrop tops. Press tab, select an out top and in the node click on the tiny circle to turn the render flag on. Next we're going to instance a circle. So let's press tab and select a circle sop. Then we right click here to attach a geometry. Press tab and attach a camera. Press tab again, attach a concept material and here drag and drop the material to the geometry and select parameter material. Now press tab and select the render so we can render what we have up to now. Go ahead and attach the render to the out and there we have our circle. To make it into only an outline of the circle, let's click on the circle node and in the parameter window set the arc type to open arc. For the next step we're going to instance a bunch of circles. To do that let's press tab and add a constant chop. This is going to help us set the number of instances we're going to drive. In the parameter window, change the channel name to instance amount and set this to 200. And then we're going to create two pattern chops. Since we're instancing, we want both pattern chops to be the same length. So let's press A to put the constant material viewer active and let's drag it on top of the first pattern chop until the parameter window appears and finally drop it onto the length and select chop reference. Repeat the same process for the second pattern and then we're going to rename the first pattern. In the parameter window go to channel and set the name to TZ for translation in the Z axis. Let's do the same for the second pattern but instead let's rename it to RZ. And last thing here let's click on the pattern once again and in the parameter window let's change the type to RAM. Okay now let's right click on the first pattern to attach a null. The null will allow us to experiment with the chops that feed into it without having to unexport from one chop and re-export from another. Right click again here on the line to attach a merge and attach also the second pattern to the merge. The merge chop takes multiple inputs, in our case the two patterns, and merges them into the output. Now let's click on the geometry node and in the parameter window go to instancing and turn the instancing on. Once we're here we're going to drag and drop the node to the translate operator and to the rotate operator of the geometry. We're going to change here the translate Z to TZ and rotate Z to RZ. What we have right now is the 100 circles that we instance all packed together. If you remember we set the first parameter as a translatory operator so if I click on it go to the parameter window, decrease the taper to around minus 87 and increase the offset to around 5, the circles will separate from each other and create this tunnel-like effect. To animate an endless loop here, we will have to change the face to something that is constantly changing with time. So let's go ahead and type abstime.seconds and we're going to multiply this with uh, 0 0.01. Let's copy this expression and we're going to paste this into the face of the second pattern in order to have an animation changing with time. Only right now we don't see any change in the animation. The reason this happens is firstly because the second pattern is an animation changing the rotation of the geometry, which in this case is a circle and that's why we're not able to see the changes. So let's click on the circle and change the number of divisions to something like 3. And the second reason is that the pattern is only moving from minus 1 to 1 and so the rotation is very subtle and hard to spot. So we need to amplify the values. So the best way to do this is by attaching a math which helps us perform arithmetic operations on the channels. Accordingly, we're going to the range in the parameter window and in the from range is the range in which we are currently, which is minus 1 to 1. And in the to range, we're going to set the range we actually want, which is 0 to 360. There we have it. Now we are able to see the rotatory effect. For a better view, let's change the background to black. We're going to right click before the out and add a transform to fill the background with a solid color. So in the parameter window set the alpha parameter to 1 and turn on comp over background color. For some motion blur let's go to the palette and from the image filters let's drag and drop the feedback edge and connect it to the render and to the transform.
If we're not happy with the default color with which the feedback edge comes, we can attach here a lookup. The lookup top replaces color values in the top image connected to its first input with values derived from a lookup table created from its second input. So in the second input we're going to attach a ramp and in the bar here we're just going to change the color to something else. I went with blue. For the next step we want to morph between animations with different divisions. When we do this manually, the change happens very abruptly, so we have to use a way with which the change happens very smoothly. So let's go to the circle and attach a SOP tool. What this does is it takes the point data from SOPs, modifies it in chops as samples and fits it back to our geometry as point attributes through the channel SOP. And this is a necessary step in order to create the transitions we want. So let's first decide which number of divisions we're going to animate. So let's say 3, 6, 10 and 50. So we're going to create a new circle for each of these values by copy pasting the first node and pairing them with the corresponding number of divisions. So the first one is going to be 3, the second one 6, the third one 8 and the last one 50. Next we're going to convert all of them to chops. So let's copy and paste the SOP2 operator three times. Now if we zoom in here we can see that the lengths of these SOP2 operators are all different and they need to be of the same length. So we need to stretch them all by the circle that has the highest amount of samples, which in our case is the last one. Let's go ahead and press tab to add the stretch chop and we're going to create two more copies of this since we need to do stretch three times. Let's connect all three stretch chops to their respective SOP2. And we're going to go to the parameter window and in the length scale we're going to type a Python expression where we're going to reference the last SOP2 and divide it by, by the amount of samples of the SOP2 we're trying to modify. The outcome will be the stretching factor. So let's write down op, open brackets, single quotes, SOP2 4, single quotes, close brackets, dot, num samples slash op open brackets single quotes sub to one single quotes close brackets and make sure there are no typing errors now we're going to copy the expression and paste it in the length scale of our two next stretches with a slight change that in the second stretch we're going to divide by sub to two and in the third one we'll divide by sub to three So we achieved what we wanted and we have everywhere the same amount of samples of 51. Here we're gonna add a cross chop. The cross chop is a multi input operator that blends between two inputs at a time. This is also similar to the switch chop, however the cross chop allows for interpolation between the inputs. Now let's attach this to a null and we're going to add the chop to SOP which is going to convert all the sample data from the chops back into point positions and point attributes. Let's connect the chop to, to the geo and if we click here on the cross, we can see that if we slide the cross here between uh, 0 and 1, we have that smooth transition between the animated shapes. The one that we couldn't do only with the divisions, so that's why we had to do this whole network. Now for the next step we need to animate the cross so we won't have to do it manually. I will go to the palette and add a custom component. This one I stumbled upon while watching a tutorial myself. I will link the component and also the tutorial in the description so you can go check that out as well. The parameter is called base parameter states. 
If we go to the parameter window and click on the pulse here, it will reset all the settings and we can start from scratch. Now in our network, we only have the one parameter, which is the number of divisions changing into four different states. So the parameter number is one in our case, but the least amount you can put here is two. So I'm just going to put down two and let's also set the state number to four and let's go ahead and press on pause to generate. Let's change the name of the parameter to cross and we can leave the second parameter name unchanged and for each of the states we're going to assign a number from 0 to 3. So this will allow us to animate the cross to transition between the four states. So let's right click here to attach a null, press A to put it viewer active and drag the cross, hover it on top of the cross node drop it onto the cross value and select chop reference. Now if we click on our component, we can see here that we're in the second state whose cross value is one, which matches with the value in the cross here. So if I change, for example, into the first state, the animation will translation into the first state, the one with the three divisions. Now in here we also have another parameter called filter width, which when increased further smooths the, the transition. Now for the last steps, we want the transitions to loop over time. We can achieve this by creating a timeline chop. The timeline chop outputs time-based chop channels for a specific component. We see here in the bottom left part that our timeline goes from 1 to 600. So we're going to map all four of our states into the 600 frames we have and we'll do this by adding a math chop. Put the from range 1 to 600 and the to range 1 to 4. Let's click on the op and set the integer to floor. The integer parameter converts the resulting values to an integer. We can see here while we're between the 100 and 200 frames, we're in the first state of our transition, between 200 and 300 in the second state and so on. For demonstration purposes, I will put the filter width back to 2 and let's create a null. Press A to make it viewer active. And if we drag and drop it into the state of our component and say chop reference, we have our loop transitioning over time. Here I just realized that the transition is not making it to the fourth state and this has something to do with the integer parameter in our math. When, where we set floor, if we now set ceiling, then it probably will omit the first state. So we see it goes all the way to four and then it begins from two. So let's put the integer back to floor and in the range we're just going to write down 5 here instead of 4. And there we have it. You can still play around with the filter width or set other parameters for the states to change, but this is the core of the animation. So I hope you liked it and found some inspiration for your own projects. And if you have any questions or tutorial recommendations, please leave them in the comments and we will see you on the next video. Bye!